Today on Food for Thought, we're transforming the salad from a side dish to the main course with three hearty and delicious recipes, all using the same homemade balsamic vinaigrette. First up, a caprese pasta salad with toasted pine nuts. Then, a roasted beet salad with goat cheese and arugula. And finally, I make my Nana's potato salad with the help of my friend, singer-songwriter, Nathan Pacheco. Today, I'm making a menu full of salads. These aren't your average green leafy side salads. These dishes are full of fresh vegetables and grains. I'm getting started with my caprese pasta salad with toasted pine nuts. It's super fresh and really simple with cherry tomatoes, basil, mozzarella, and balsamic vinaigrette that makes it perfectly irresistible. To get started, I'm going to measure out my orzo, which is just a rice-shaped pasta. You can use any pasta you like, but I like orzo because it's really small and has a great texture. So I'm just gonna measure out a cup right here. Perfect. And into the pot until it's perfectly al dente. So while my pasta is cooking, I'm gonna get started on the rest of my ingredients. The spread I have here is basically the holy trinity of Italian cooking. You have seen this everywhere, even if you didn't know it. Think of a margarita pizza, a caprese salad, a caprese sandwich, mozzarella with basil and tomato. It's just meant to be. So as you can see, these are just the perfect little bites. So I'm just gonna have these. And I'm gonna do this entire container, and that's because I want to get a bite of everything with every forkful. That's the reason why this is such a hearty salad, is it has a lot of different textures and a lot of great chunky ingredients in it. Well, I have my mountain of mini mozzarella, so I'm gonna get started on just slicing these in half and setting them aside. Great, well, now I'm gonna get started on my tomatoes, and because these are a little bit larger, I'm going to quarter them. The idea here is you want everything to be the same size. You don't wanna have a big chunk of mozzarella and just a little bit of tomato. You want it all to be even so you get an equal bite of everything. I'm going to want about the same amount of mozzarella and tomatoes, so just kind of eyeball it if you don't really know exactly what the measurement is. And you know what? I think I'm actually going to eat these because if you look at a piece of the mozzarella next to the tomato, you can see that it still needs to get halved because you want it to all be the exact same size. Now I'm going to chiffonade my basil, which is just sort of a fancy way of saying I'm slicing it up. So the trick here is you peel off all the leaves like so, and then I'm going to stack them, roll them up, and slice them. And as you can see, I've sliced these into really fine ribbons. And the idea here is you want the basil to give all the flavor, but not really any of its chewier texture. You don't want to get any leaves stuck in your teeth. This looks like about a half a cup, so I'm starting with this. I can always add more. And I'm pretty sure my orzo is about done, so I'm gonna go drain it. So while my orzo cools, I'm going to get started on my balsamic vinaigrette, which I'm gonna be using all day. It's one of those super versatile vinaigrettes that I just love on practically anything. And it's so simple. It's just balsamic vinegar, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And the cool thing here is all you have to remember is one ratio, one to three. And all that means is for every one part of vinegar, three parts of oil, one part acid, three parts fat. So you can do this with lemon juice, you can do this with any kind of vinaigrette you like. It's really simple once you have it down. So to start, I'm gonna get my beautiful, super thick, really rich balsamic vinegar. And I'm making a slightly larger batch today because I'm gonna be using it in everything. And now for the olive oil. So if I put in two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, that means six tablespoons of the olive oil. And this might look like it's ready to go, but salt and pepper are just as important to vinaigrette as it is to any other ingredient you're using today. So I need to season my vinaigrette. So I'm just gonna put in a little bit of salt, sort of a large pinch, and then some fresh pepper. And I'm just gonna pop the top on, nice and tight, because I don't wanna have this all over my face. 
and then you just shake it like that. And you can see that it's perfectly emulsified together. You basically want it to all have the same consistency, a really nice sheen, and all the same color. My vinaigrette is done, so I'm just gonna put it all together. So the orzo is perfectly drained and it's cooled down. And the reason why I want it cool is because I don't want the warm orzo to cook the tomatoes. I want my tomatoes to be really fresh and have a great texture to them. So you wanna cool it before you put it in. So I'm just gonna add about two tablespoons of my vinaigrette straight into the orzo. And I'm just gonna stir it up. And the reason why I'm adding the vinaigrette straight to the orzo before I add the other ingredients is because the vinaigrette will color the mozzarella and I want that to stay a beautiful white. All right, well this looks just about dressed. So I'm gonna add the other ingredients and just mix them together. So I have my toasted pine nuts. And what I love about these is they just give a beautiful sort of toasted flavor and a great crunchy texture. So now I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients and I'm gonna do it in two batches because I wanna season it in between. So I'm just gonna season it with a little bit of salt and now the pepper. I love pepper with anything caprese. Just adds that little bit of a spicy bite. Well, this looks beautiful, but I still have to add the rest of my ingredients. So in they go. And you can see that this pasta salad is just as much about the salad as it is about the pasta. I like having everything in a really nice balance here, so you get all of those different flavors and textures. And once again, just a little more seasoning. So one more big stir through. And don't obliterate it. You just need to give it one or two passes so everything gets nice and integrated. Well, the only thing left to do is finish it with a drizzle of balsamic vinegar. I love this for just like that last big hit. It's so delicious. Well, let's give it a taste. Mmm. That's really fresh tasting. You get that beautiful herbaceous hit from the basil. All the balsamic really brings it together. Really delicious. Up next, a salad that comes from the oven. Stay tuned for another fresh and easy recipe. And later, special celebrity guest Nathan Pacheco visits me in the kitchen. Welcome back. My roasted beet salad with goat cheese and arugula is a winner everywhere I take it, and it uses the same vinaigrette I just made. It's vegetarian yet hearty enough for the biggest meat eater. Roasted beets are earthy, sweet, firm, and full of color and flavor. In my beet salad, I like to pair it with some spicy arugula, fresh goat cheese, and toasted pecans. I think beets are making a comeback. You can find them anywhere now. And what I love about fresh beets is you get that really beautiful earthy flavor rather than when you get it canned or pickled, you don't really get that full beet flavor. So I love them. They're also really versatile. Right now I'm taking off the tops, but make sure to save them. You can saute these up and put them in a salad. You can put them in pasta. I treat them like I would treat kale. And I love how colorful beets are. They come in basically every shape and size, almost as many colors as you can imagine. Right now today, I am using red beets and golden beets. I love their flavor, but you can find a lot of other really beautiful ones at your market. So I've trimmed all of my beets and they're ready to be roasted. I'm going to wrap them up in a little bit of aluminum foil just to make sure they get really nice and cooked. And these are super big beets. They're in season right now, so they look absolutely gorgeous, but they will take a little bit longer to cook in the oven. So to roast these, I'm going to put them on a little bit of aluminum foil, just three at a time and wrapping them up. And the idea here is that by wrapping them up, it's going to keep the skins really intact with the beet. So when I skin them later, they'll peel right off really easily. While these are ready to go in the oven, I'm going to roast them at about 425 for 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how large they are. I basically want them to be fork tender. Well, my beets are out of the oven and cooled, so it's time to peel them. 
and beets will stain. So I have a little bit of a setup going on. I have a plastic sheet that I'm putting over my cutting board because I don't want to stain my cutting board. And then I am using these super nifty plastic gloves. And that is because the red beets especially, they will stain your hands for like two days. So if you do forget these, it's not a big deal. Just make sure to immediately wash your hands with warm water and a little bit of soap and it should come out. To peel a beet, it's pretty simple. Because these have been roasted, the skin should come right off. And you just have to push it really gently with your finger and you just get all that beautiful color underneath. And you wanna be careful that you don't press too hard because you don't wanna ever mush the beet or smash the beet. You want it to retain its shape and its texture. Well, my beets are peeled so they're ready to get sliced up. And I want these to be cut into bite-sized slices. My beets are prepared and I'm ready to start building the rest of my salad. So that means arugula, and I love arugula with beets. It has this really great peppery bite and it goes beautifully with the beet sweetness. So I'm just gonna add a couple of big handfuls, just like that. And the reason why I'm keeping my glove on is because I'm just gonna dress this by hand. And I have my balsamic vinaigrette, which is the same one I made before. I love this because it's so versatile. So I'm shaking it up to make sure it's emulsified. Now I'm going to dress this to taste. So I'm just gonna start with a couple of tablespoons, not a lot. I like a little bit of a lighter dressing on my salads, but if you like more, add more. And so you can use your hands, you can use tongs, whatever you like, but since I already have a glove on, I'm gonna use my hands. And I like to do this by hand because that way you don't end up ever crushing the greens. You can be really delicate. Time to plate. So I'm gonna put everything together and I'm gonna add my other two ingredients. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of my beet salad just right onto the plate. And now I'm gonna add the goat cheese and this is really soft goat cheese. And I love leaving it in big, nice chunks so you can really get the flavor. I'm gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of pecan for some beautiful crunch, yum. And like I said before, I love fresh cracked pepper, especially on salad, so I'm gonna hit this with a little bit. Great, well, time to give it a taste. Let's see how this turned out. Mmm, that is so, so good. I love the balance of flavors. The goat cheese is really creamy, and with the earthy beets, I really, really love this combination. I've got two salads from one dressing, but now I'm moving on to an old family favorite of mine, Nana's potato salad. And to help me make it, my friend, singer-songwriter, Nathan Pacheco. Welcome back to Food for Thought. I've been working on salads all day, and as promised, I'm here with my very special guest and friend and singer-songwriter, Nathan Pacheco. Great to be here, Claire. Put me to work. Yes, I'm so happy to have you here today. Well, we are making a recipe that's super dear to my heart. It is my Nana's potato salad. So I won't put you to too hard of work. We're basically just gonna be prepping it, putting it together, and then hopefully eating it. Let's do it. So I'm gonna let you help me and get started on this bacon. It I sounds need, like a plan. Yes, I need it chopped up so it's nice and bite-sized. You can just go through the whole thing. You just kind of want it to be not bacon bit-sized, but enough that you get a little bite of it, but it's not a giant piece of bacon. All right. And I'm gonna get started on the I'll dough. I'll let you box. check on my work. I will, I'll, I'll, my I'll, I'll be over your process. shoulder. Don't worry about it. Well, now that I have you to work helping me in the kitchen, tell me about your tour. You just came back from Europe, right? Uh, I did. I was over in the UK doing a tour for a couple months, and wow. it was amazing. We went throughout all of England, Wales, Scotland, and performed in the most beautiful theaters and for incredible audiences. It was just an unforgettable experience, being able to see all these places that I hadn't seen before and sing my heart out for all these people to just love this style of music that I sing. It really was an opportunity that I'll never forget. Wow. How am I baking a bit still? We need a cup, so I think we need a little more bacon. All right, sounds good. Yeah, but I'm gonna start it on putting the salad together in the bowl. Okay. Great. I've quartered my rose potatoes and I've cooked them so they're just tender. You don't want them mushy at all. You want them to have a little bit of a bite. So I'm just gonna put this straight into the bowl. And now I'm going to add my balsamic vinaigrette. So I'm just gonna pour that right on top and stir it together. 
Well, that looks like plenty of bacon, and right. I have my dill pickles organized, so I'm just gonna pop this right into the bowl. Okay. And I'm gonna have you do Should the same. I throw this in the bowl too? Throw it in there. Am I allowed to eat a few before I throw <laughs> yeah, them? Yeah, you can. Save a couple. <laughs> Chef snack. There you go. Looks great. Well, Bacon's good to go. I'm giving you a new job. You are going to be the chive snipper, okay. and it's not that complicated, so I okay, think I, can handle that. I think you'll be able. <laughs> Even better. Yes, I think a road weary musician will be able to handle it. So Sounds good. here you go. You just, so I just snip these with the scissors. Exactly, and you just want to snip about a quarter inch. Kind of like that. Perfect. Okay. You're really busting out some skills in the kitchen today. <laughs> oh, come so, on now. <laughs> I, well, I mean, do you cook a lot? When you, I feel like you're on the road and you're busy with your music career. Do you get an opportunity to step into the kitchen? Cooking is not my forte. We'll leave it at that. I would much rather sing for my food than be the one responsible for providing a good meal. But I love to eat. So now I'm going to finally chop my red onion. And I love using raw red onion rather than yellow or white because it has a bit of a sweeter flavor, so it's really good in the potato salad. Mission completed. Wow, that was fast. No, but those look fantastic. All right, All what right. else can I help with? Let me see, well, I think this is about half a cup of my onion, so I'm gonna chuck that in, and let's save some of the chives, because we're gonna use some okay. of it for garnish, right. but then we can pop about two thirds right in there. All right, that looks like about two thirds. That is a very good eyeball. And I'm gonna pop mine in there. Great, well next I'm going to chop my eggs and usually I don't like using specific kitchen equipment, I'd rather just use my knife, but an egg chopper actually does help here and I have my mums on hand so it's very handy. And I already have my hard boiled eggs that I've peeled. You just pop it in here and this was my favorite job when I was a little girl. Was so it? This was my one thing I could help out in the kitchen with where you know it didn't involve a sharp blade or you know, right. anything like that. So there we go, just that one and then I pick it up so it's still intact, be careful, and then you just slice it one more time, like so. All right, so okay. I'm gonna give you these other two eggs, Okay. and I'm gonna have you finish this up for me. Great. I'm gonna hand this over to you. All right. Don't break it, your mom will be really <laughs> mad. Okay. And I'm gonna finish this up, so all I have to do is throw some peas in, and I love the peas in the salad. It adds a lot of sweetness that's so good and a really fresh flavor. How are we looking, Claire? That is fantastic egg chopping. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm gonna add a half cup of mayonnaise, which when you see the size of the salad, it's not that much. It's just there to put all of the flavors together. All right, well, all we're missing are our eggs, so pop those in. Okay. That's sort of our last thing, because they're a little bit delicate, so I don't want to overmix them at all. And then it's very salty from the bacon, so I'm just gonna add some pepper, give it a taste, and maybe a little bit of salt. Well, I've been wanting to dig in ever since I smelled the bacon, and so <laughs> I can't wait till we get to try this. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna try this and a whole lot more when we come back, so don't go away. here with my friend and singer-songwriter Nathan Pacheco and we have just finished a very big spread of salad so the finishing touch on the potato salad is our chives. Should I do that now? Yep, go for it. You, right. you snipped them, you get to garnish with them. You got it. Excellent garnish skills, that looks really good. <laughs> Thank you, learning from the best. Thank you very much. Yes, well this is one of my favorite recipes and so easy to put together and I can't wait to give it a try. Do you want to dig Likewise, in? Likewise, yeah, ladies first, go oh, for it though. Thank you very much. All right, let's see. Just save the bacon for me. I will, don't worry, I'm gonna make sure I get as much bacon as possible. Okay. How is it? Just like Nana used to make. <laughs> All right, I've gotten a big piece of bacon right here. It's almost like a baked potato salad, a little bit, because mm -hmm. it has the chives, it has bacon, the potatoes, yeah. a bit of mayo. It certainly is, can I have another bite? Please, oh my god, go to <laughs> have as much as you want. Well, I just had the most amazing bite with these chives, bacon, and everything, you can taste that. Mm. It gives a perfect flavor in my opinion. 
So the other salads we have here that I made before you arrived is a caprese orzo salad with pine nuts. So okay. really fresh, really bright, super easy, and it has mozzarella in it, so you can't hate Great. it. <laughs> and then I have a roasted beet salad with goat cheese, arugula, pecans, and all of the salads today have the same dressing in it, believe it or not. Well, well done. Thank you. <laughs> As you can see. So you just came off a big tour, and you have a couple okay. of other really big things coming up. Yes, a, a lot of exciting things are happening in the next little little while. An EP is going to be released on May 22nd, and then my debut album will be released in September. That's huge. That's fantastic. Well, I'm dying to know, what does your new album sound like? So I'd say that the best description of my debut album is that it has elements of opera, pop, and even folk music. It's a style of music that I love, and I hope that people that hear it love it as well. Well, thank you so much for joining me My today. My pleasure. Thanks for feeding me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you enjoyed everything. I really did. Thank you. For more information on Nathan Pacheco's self-titled album and tour dates, make sure to check out NathanPacheco.com. And thank you for tuning in for another episode of Food for Thought. <laughs>